Let's discuss the surgical management of this patient wherein a posterior capsular rupture occurs at the end of nucleus management. Let's move to watching the surgery. This patient had a grade 2 nucleus sclerosis and the patient was posted for phacoemulsification. The steps prior to the nucleus management, that is the incision, the capsular rexis and the hydrodissection were uneventful. Let's get to the nucleus management. The surgical technique that has been chosen is that of a direct chop. The nucleus is impaled with a phaco probe and the nucleus is divided into two heminuclei. Having divided the nucleus, it is now further subdivided into smaller emulsifiable fragments. Once downsized, each of the fragments is then brought up into the pupillary plane and subsequently emulsified. The nucleus disassembly and emulsification seems to be going rather well. This brings us to the end of the nucleus management, at the end of which I proceed to remove the epinucleus in the epinucleus mode of phacoemulsification. Let's see what happens at the end of that. Towards the end of the epinucleus removal, whilst I'm about to get the last bit of epinucleus, accidentally I hold on to the posterior capsule. You can see the radiating folds in the posterior capsule. When I release it, unfortunately it creates a punched out tear in the posterior capsule. Now, how do I manage the case hereafter? I've got a tear in the posterior capsule, I've got the phaco probe in the eye with the irrigation on, so let's see now what was done to prevent the PCR from extending and to prevent any vitreous loss. So without reflexly removing the phaco probe, the second instrument is removed out of the eye, a viscofluid exchange done and then the phaco probe is removed from the eye. This prevents any further vitreous herniation. And as you can see, there has been no enlargement of this circular tear in the posterior capsule. Fortunately, in this case, there was hardly any cortex, so we now proceed directly to the implantation of a monofocal IOL in the capsular bag. Under adequate viscoelastic cover, let's watch the implantation of the monofocal IOL in the capsular bag. With care and caution, it is first injected into the anterior chamber in a slightly downward direction, so as to now enable the leading haptic to go in the capsular bag, after which you can see how the optic is pushed slightly backwards and that allows the unfolding of the haptics within the capsular bag. In this case, you'll see that both the haptics seem to be slightly stuck to each other. It may take a few moments or even a couple of minutes to get unhinged. I soon come to realize that this superior haptic is twisted and is actually outside the capsular bag. Note how with the Sinsky hook it is brought inwards, untwisted and encouraged to take its proper orientation in the capsular bag. So now we have a monofocal IOL well centered within the capsular bag despite the presence of a punched out posterior capsular rupture behind it. With care and caution, the excess viscoelastic is now removed from the anterior chamber. You will be able to clearly notice that the tear in the posterior capsule has not enlarged at all. While maintaining the irrigation still in the eye, a stromal hydration is performed at the paracentesis and the main incision. After which the irrigation probe is removed and that paracentesis is also hydrated. This is the end result that we achieve. A monofocal IOL, stable and well-centered in the capsular bag with a punched out posterior capsular rupture. I do hope that you found this video useful. Thank you.